Hi everybody, I'm Nick Stam. I'm the Technical Marketing Director uh, with NVIDIA. And um, I'm here to show Tegra 4. Um, and she, talking about Tegra 4 versus Tegra 3 and, and, and other devices out there in the market. Well, we're really excited about Tegra 4. As you can see in this overarching slide here, we've got 72 GPU cores. That compares to 12 GPU cores in Tegra 3. So that's 6x the number of shader cores. Delivered performance in benchmarks would probably be 3 to 4x in actual graphics benchmarks. We've got quad core, the first quad core A15, uh, Cortex A15. And we also have a fifth uh, power saver core, which is also an A15, synthesized a bit differently, working at lower voltage and lower power for those tasks that don't require as much computational you know, intensity. And we can turn on and turn off the uh, remaining, these other main cores. You only need one of them active, one of them is active. Two, two, we, so we can power on and off the other cores as needed and switch seamlessly between the power saver core and the main cores, just like we did with Tegra 3 with its Cortex A9s. And we also have, um, off to the side here is a picture of our new 4G LTE Isera i500 uh, LTE modem uh, chip, you know, baseband chip, and we're really excited about that too, which is a whole separate topic, but NVIDIA will now have its own LTE capability, both in the discrete form as well as integrated into our project grade chip coming in 2013. So we expect to see a lot of Tegra uh, 4 devices, both tablets and phones, in in 13. And of course, Tegra 4 is using our new Project Shield device, uh, which is coming in Q2 of this year. We're really excited about that. Now, what do you need with all this computational power? Why do we need the horsepower? Well, guess what? Anytime you wait for things, for your computer to do stuff, that's a waste of your time. So you want to have faster processing in most of the things you do with your computers today, even things like web surfing, okay, where if you look at 25 of the most popular websites, we ran a test with Tegra 4, just rendering websites. You don't want to wait for these web websites to render. There's multiple threads that pull down elements of the site. Well, with Tegra 4, you're going to be faster than all of our competitors right now in the market. And we expect that to be the case through 2013 at least. So um, much faster web, just basic web surfing, okay? You don't have to wait. And there's many other use cases that will be uh, accelerated, especially you know, games as comes to mind as you know, one of the primo applications of, you know, that, that requires a lot of computational horsepower to do the graphics rendering, to do all the game uh, control, the, the artificial intelligence, the physics, physics of the game. Um, so having more horsepower for games is critical, and we're nowhere near photorealistic rendering. Even at the high end, you know, with our big GTX 680s and three of them, to be photorealistic for the entire scene, to look like Hollywood movies, which are offline rendered with farms of GPUs, you know, we're nowhere near that, even in your personal PCs at home, so we're going to need a lot more horsepower into the future. And especially on mobile devices, I mean, we've got a long way to go to be photorealistic. So it's horsepower for graphics and CPU cores is going to just be needed well into the future, as well as other intensive use cases. You want your systems to be more location aware. Your, your handheld devices are going to be your primary uh, computers, and for many people they are today. And you want you know, location-aware processing, uh, pattern recognition, machine vision types of things, um, better speech recognition, both local as well as you know the cloud does a lot of it today with with the uh, Google Voice or, or Siri type applications. But you know you really got a lot of uh, uh, different use cases that that you know can be more advanced and implemented in these devices if you have the processing power. Okay, there's there's just so many. Uh, sorts of applications that we don't do today because we don't have the horsepower. So I say there's a long, you know, ahead of us. We've got many years of we need more, we need more processing power in our mobile devices. Okay, so Tegra 4 is on that map right now. I think you'll see typical application performance at two to three x faster than Tegra Tegra 3, and we'll just continue on with the roadmap. Our next generation Tegra, uh, Logan, and then Stark. Um, we've got a whole bunch of stuff planned in the future, so look forward to that. And that's a quick wrap of Tegra 4. Thanks very much.